It's really exciting when new technology hits the knife market, like the ant lock on the steel wheel tasso. Well, that's right, folks. Welcome to this episode where we take a look at the brand new steel wheel tasso and we take a look at the brand new locking mechanism that they have released on this model in the ant lock. That's the locking mechanism that uh, is now being released on this to begin with steel wheel and I'm sure it's gonna be dropping on lots of new designs in coming months and years. And it's always fun and exciting to see no, new technology from companies. So really excited today to talk to you about that, but also just show you what this knife has to offer. We're getting a lot of super premium materials, fit and finish and quality for a great price point. So we're gonna break it all down for you today. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to it and see what this knife has to offer us. All right, so we're gonna look at the deployment all that functionality, um, centering, and then we'll actually get to the functionality of this ant lock, and we'll discuss that briefly here in just a moment. But we have really nice coned out thumb studs on either side there. Steel Will uses this on, on a lot of their knives. Very far away from the body with that milling down, so it's very easy for you to engage. Boom, fly right open. So this is gonna be very easy for you to deploy. It does run on bronze bushings, so very strong, very durable, uh, smooth, very, very, very smooth. Think of like a Rap Model 1, think of several, you know, I have several Benchmades that are very smooth, uh, very, very smooth. I can literally disengage the lock and the blade will drop and swing. So very smooth, strong deployment in that regard. Good centering, as you can see there. Now, uh, one thing that I did want to hit on the very, very tip, the grinding is slightly to one side. I didn't see that after it, it kind of moves away from the tip. You will see this on a lot of knives, but I could just tell ever so slightly, and you probably saw there in that picture, the grinding was off ever so slight to one side near the tip, and, they, and then it contours and it looks symmetrical once you kind of leave maybe like that point right there. So that'd be easy work for me, and you see that with a lot of bench maids and spider codes and all kinds of different blades from all types of manufacturers that by no means is a deal killer but perfect centering there not floating to one side or the other the detent is strong but i can whip it out like that jerk that blade and there you go and then again drop it and swing it down the one thing also that i want to note and i'm going to shake this near the mic for us here if i can you can hear that that's these, the, the disengaging pins, which are matching to the cones of the thumb studs. They're basically the thumb studs again. They do move slightly and just kind of rattle around in there. Uh, so it's not quite, there's, you can just hear that. Whereas you're not gonna get that say on a Benchmade or some of these other ones. So down the line, it would be nice. I, I don't know, there's no way that I could tighten that or fix that. It's just kind of like the tolerances that they decided to go with. It would be nice if there was no little rattle. It's, it's not causing any problems. It's just a little slight nuisance. You know, when you tap the knife, there's just this, this little tapping, rattling noise that I would have preferred not to have with the locking mechanism. And when I deploy that sucker, this thing is rock solid. I have just the slightest of wobble side to side none up and down totally rock solid and very similar to most other blades i own with that slight ever so slight side to side um i can just feel the slight rock in there now the again locking mechanism being right there and i'm going to walk through it i'm not going to take the knife apart you can watch some other videos of people trying to take it apart i'm, I'm not going to do that in this particular video i'm just going to kind of walk you through what i see uh, in those thumb studs where you raise the blade or the the studs up towards the back of the spine. You can easily do that with your thumb or index fingers, or you can do it together. That will release the blade and it closes into place. And there's kind of this, basically like a lock bar that breaks in half there. And hopefully I'm gonna show this to you guys well. You can see there when you push up, it breaks the locking portion and that frees the blade up. And then it, when you, the, you let go, the tension of, of a spring inside of a retention bar, not spring, sorry, a retention bar, keeps it down and keeps the blade locked. And then when you push up again, it releases that and relieves the pressure so that it can then fall. So um, I don't have any strength ratings. I'm not gonna attach, you know, like a semi truck to it and try and pull it and break it and all that. I'm sure somebody down the line will do stuff like that. That's totally fine. From everything that I am seeing with the design, with the functionality, aside from the slight rattling that we talked about, it's very functional, very easy to use, very similar to anything, say, like your Benchmade. 
uh, an axis lock where you would pull backwards and remove that stop bar. It, it operates in, in functionality, I'm saying, when you're actually deploying it, instead of pulling backwards and able to do it, you just pull up, push up, and it does the exact same thing. Now the motions are different, the locking, this is just a pin back here. This is more of like a lock bar back here. Some different ways to lock the blade, but um, very similar strengths from everything that I am seeing with your everyday use. It's a very cool, unique, different, and from what I can tell, patented by Steel Will for their proprietary use, at least now until the patent runs out, functionality with this ant lock. That's cool, it's a really cool, innovative locking mechanism that I would totally use on many of my knives and enjoy every minute of it. Now, super nice to see this blade shape, really cool buoy design there, nice clip, really done well. Now this is M390 steel, that is absolutely a super steel. Uh, I have it on my mini Gecko that we'll talk about comparison here in just a little bit. I do have it on that. So I've, I've had M390 in the past from Steel Will. They do a really good job with the heat treats, Italian done, uh, and it's a super steel. So I mean, it's gonna hold an edge for a very long period of time. It's rust resistant. I'm not gonna go into all the details. I'm not some metal whiz. You can read all the forums and go online if you wanna argue about blade types. But uh, it is kind of tedious to resharpen. I'm just going to be real with you. If you drop it, you chip it, you nick it over time, uh, you know, just tuning it up on a ceramic rod is easy. But if there's any damage actually done to the edge, it will take you some time. You are definitely going to have to have some good diamond stones, uh, a good kit to really put the edge back on it. Now, the relief edge that they put on this was nicely done. Uh, the blade thickness on the back stocked by the thumb studs is 0.14. So a little bit on the beefy side, but with the high saber grind, it's a very strong knife, good still and slicey uh, without it not being like overly thin and flimsy. So you're getting strength, but still getting some good sliciness on it. Handle to tip is three and a half. Actual cutting edge is about three and a quarter inches overall My cutting edge. And it's, I mean, it's a, it's a knife that will absolutely do the, what you want it to do uh, and look good doing it and hold the edge for a very long period of time and you're not gonna break the bank. I mean, you can spend tons of money on an M390 Italian made knife. So this is coming in under the $200 price that we'll talk about here briefly in just a moment is really impressive. So we're gonna hit price here real briefly and uh, just talk about that. Now this Tazo is gonna come in at $170. Blade HQ GP knives, links below. Uh, check them out for the money that you're gonna be throwing down. You're getting a freaking lot of knife, a lot of steel, a lot of quality, a lot of um, just capability with this blade at under $200 for the M390 Italian made with G10 and this ant lock system. It's pretty impressive because even another steel will, this mini gecko, I believe this is the 1559 with M390 steel. It's got a standard lock back design, contour G10 handles, stainless steel liners. This thing's gonna go for about 230 on Blade HQ GP knives, right around in that area. Uh, so you are getting something just basically without the steel liners and a different locking mechanism for much less with the same steel on there. So that's really impressive and that's a more normal rate. So it's impressive than the price that they're going with. Um, 230, 240 would be very reasonable normally for the materials and, and stuff we're seeing on this steel wheel. So it's crazy that they can sell for under $200 and then just to give you some other perspective with the other knife that we're looking at, you know, this Benchmade USA made S30V steel, lower, I mean, it's not by no means a bad steel, but it's a lower quality than M390. M390 has higher edge retention, strength, that type of stuff. Um, and uh, Italian made, USA made, uh, and this guy's going for like 190. So for the $170 price point, you are getting a lot of bang for buck. Check out those links below, guys. We appreciate it when you use them. And uh, Steel Will did send this uh, Tazo over to me to test out, review, see what this new locking mechanism had to offer so I can give you guys all the data points so you can make that wise choice. Is this knife the right choice for you? Or is a Benchmade or another Axis lock or some of these other new, new locking mechanisms similar to that coming out better for you? Is just a standard maybe um, M390 uh, or even, uh, what is it, M690 uh, Mini Gecko? You know, is that a better choice for you? That's what we always wanna do here when I make these videos is give you all the data so that you can make that wise choice when you're throwing down your hard-earned money on your blades and gear. All right, let's go ahead and look at the handle. This is a nice thing is that they're giving you a pretty beefy knife with a strong locking mechanism and a pretty lightweight package. This is gonna come in at 4.16 ounces. Now it is done with this really nice machined G10, as you can see here. 
Really well done, nice orange backspacer. I'm sure they'll give you combinations down the line of all this stuff. Um, but you can see there how it's nice and contoured, rounded. There's no clunkiness or blockiness to it. You do have that hidden lanyard stud back there. You can throw a lanyard hole on. You got those screws, you can completely take it apart. It is not flow through, but there are no steel liners in there. Uh, it has really obviously strong G10. Uh, I've never had an issue with the G10 knife. I mean, short of you driving over it a couple times, that should be able to handle all the abuse that you would throw at it. Feels very good in my large size hands. I wear large size gloves, no hot spots, contours very nicely. We have a little bit of jimping right there. Bites in without it being overly aggressive. Deep lock in, so I have full control over the knife, even in piercing tasks. Reverse hammer grip, feels very natural. All those little cut-ins fit perfectly. I don't ever feel like it's too thin, too thick, anything like that. And then this Ricasso, I would argue, is probably a designated choil because it fits my, again, large size hands right there very nicely. It's not overly sharp right there where I'm afraid I'm going to nick myself. And then I have total control, and this feels really natural back here of the knife. So I can get really nice and controlled cuts on it. And then obviously back up here again. So this has a lot of capability and a great handle ergonomics and feel in the hand. Now, honestly, the only downer that I'm seeing with the knife is the pocket clip. It's for righties only. And there's no reason why they couldn't have done that and given us an ambidextrous capability, the locking mechanism, the thumb studs, all the knife screams ambidextrous. They could have just made some sort of design that could be swapped. Right now, they just cut out 10% of the market. So uh, it, it looks good. It's different than most of their other generic pocket clips that they're doing on all of their knives. So that's nice that it stands out. You do have a pretty high lip right here that could catch on to some things. It's a very strong pocket clip. So I would, uh, you would really have to catch it and crank hard on it compared to other pocket clips that are thinner and lighter weight before that would bend on you. Um, but it doesn't create any hot spots when I'm gripping the knife. It is just a little higher than I would prefer. I would have liked to see that down. Maybe you could take it off and work on it, maybe bend it slightly down lower. Uh, it will absolutely catch all your pockets to put it in your pocket. Uh, just a little higher than I prefer and not ambidextrous. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope this video has been fun and entertaining, but also giving you the data points that you need to make a wise choice on whether or not the Tasso is the right blade for you to throw into your EDC system. For me, it has a really cool capability of being this kind of big, muscular, beefy blade, but still coming in a great lightweight um, weight for the size and you know um, perspective and dimensions. Uh, but also hitting a great price point and giving us a cool, different, unique uh, locking mechanism in the ant lock. So I think it has a lot going for a lot of different people uh, with really, again, the only drawbacks being just a little bit of the uh, tolerances there with the rattle on the lock itself, which I don't know if that's just going to be standard or if that maybe they can tweak that slightly in the future and being for righties only. Those are the only two things that I see. Other than that, man, I mean, this thing is a kicking blade and looks sick in your pocket or in your hand when you're using it and feels great doing it and just does the work. So, uh, yep, that's it. There it is for you. Totally a sick blade for under 200 bucks and a lot more bang for buck than what you can get with a lot of other blades out there. So for similar price points. Uh, so thanks guys for coming over. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media, uh, throwing up stuff there all the time. We invite you to subscribe, become part of the GT family, hit that other video popping up, hit that subscription button and just become part of what's going on over here. We're posting up videos every single week, giving you these data points, information, having fun so that you guys just have wise, um, can make wise decisions and know, uh, have all the data and things that you need to, to enjoy the gear that you uh, use on a regular basis. So with that, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.